were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. Today we celebrate Epiphany. It's another one of those lesser known holidays associated with the story of Jesus. Epiphany in the history of the church has been pinned to the date January the 6th, the culmination of 12 days of Christmas. Now most of the world has already taken the Christmas decorations down and stored them away until next November. And I noticed in the grocery store yesterday that the Valentine candy has now assumed the spot on the shelf where the Christmas candy once stood. Probably even before Valentine's Day, we will begin to see some Cadbury eggs and chocolate Easter bunnies find a home on those same shelves. For most of the world, the place and time for Christmas is past. We've had enough of Christmas. We're ready to move on to something else. But for the wise men, their Christmas place and time are only now arriving. The story says that around the time of the birth of Jesus, astrologers from Persia, what is now modern-day Iran, had had their eye on a star in the eastern sky for a few weeks. And in their best understanding of how the world worked, that unusually bright star was an indication that something very special was happening in the world somewhere near Jerusalem. So they traveled. One commentator on the story said the Magi's light work was studying the stars, and when they saw a star which seemed to hold such meaning, all they could do, if they were to be true to who they were, who they were called to be, all they could do was to follow that star's direction. So having studied the stars and having felt the prodding of one particular star to make this incredible journey, when they came to the place which the star led them, there they were met by God. We know this could not have been at all what they had expected, at least not God in the form and circumstance before them. For the wise men, more than likely the journey to get to Jesus had not been an easy journey. We know the astrologer wise men had been called to the palace of Herod, Herod, a narcissistic, ruthless, and unscrupulous politician. Herod said he wanted to find whatever it was, whoever it was they were looking for, this newborn king of the Jews, so that he too could worship him and be a part of making the world great again. But we know Herod was not truly interested in making his people or country great again. Herod was only interested in what he thought could make Herod great again. <coughs> Sound familiar? <coughs> The wise men saw right through that carnival barker, Herod, and they thanked him for his support, and they went on their way. What we don't know exactly is what was their trip like. We do know that the world of their day was a harsh and hostile place in which to travel. The acclaimed poet T.S. Eliot wrote a poem based in this story called The Journey of the Magi, in which he notes the challenges the Magi may have encountered getting to that right place at the right time. Eliot uses some modern-day language to remind us that sometimes the roads to the greatest moments of our lives take us through some of the most scary or overwhelming or frustrating moments of our lives. Eliot wrote of the Magi's journey, a cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of the year for a journey, and such a long journey, the ways deep and the weather sharp, the very dead of winter, and the camels galled, sore-footed, refractory, lying down in the melting snow. There were times we regretted the summer palaces on slopes, the terraces, and the silken girls bringing sherbet, for then the camel man, men cursing and grumbling and running away and wanting their liquor and women, 
and the night fires going out and the lack of shelters and the cities hostile and the towns unfriendly and the villages dirty and charging high prices, a hard time we had of it, had of it on this journey of the Magi. At the end, we preferred to travel all night sleeping in snatches with the voices singing in our ears saying, oh, this is all folly. Yes, sometimes getting to the right place at the right time in life means spending days in the desert, in the darkness and the cold. Sometimes getting to the right place at the right time in life takes us through what seems like the wrong place and the wrong time. Have you ever found that to be true? Have you ever wondered, why, Lord? Why do you have me here? Why now? I feel so out of place, even lost. Some of you know about those journeys. Have you ever had a meltdown? <laughs> Five minutes ago? <laughs> Now, some of you are probably more prone to meltdowns than others. I have to say, I consider myself blessed in so many ways, and for whatever reason, I've not had many meltdowns in my lifetime. The one I remember the most acutely actually came at a time and a place I never expected. Jean and I were traveling from South Carolina to Indiana several years ago to visit family. I was, at the time, working in a position as a mental health counselor for the Department of Mental Health and wondering daily, why am I here? The job was stressful. The work setting was stressful. But I arranged a few days off, and we were headed to see our Indiana family, something I always looked forward to doing. Somewhere along the journey in the mountains of Tennessee on Interstate 75 North, I began to cry and could not stop. My sobbing reached a point I had to pull off the road. <coughs> now, Jean, who will freely admit to you is no stranger to meltdowns herself. <laughs> she had rarely known me to have one, though. She had this deer in the headlight look on her face, and, and, and she stuttered, oh, okay, 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 what's wrong, what's wrong? Just pull over, okay, just pull over, I'll drive, I'll drive. Well, I got it back together in about 20 minutes or so, <coughs> enough to continue the journey. What was it? I came to the conclusion it was just the cumulative stress and anxiety of working for the Department of Mental Health. <laughs> Encountering folks daily whose lives were in chaos and feeling as if the system in which I was working was not set up to help them or to support the people who worked in the system trying to help them. <laughs> Jean and I continued on our journey and we had a nice visit with our family for a few days and then I went back to work and still wondered quite frequently, why am I here? Why am I doing this? I'm out of place. For the next two years, I, I continued to wonder, why is this a part of my journey? You know that question which I was asking back in the year 2000 was not answered for me until about a year and a half ago. I came to be the pastor here at South Main Chapel and Mercy Center, and I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but my eight and a half years at the Department of Mental Health are now invaluable today. <laughs> I was on a journey. I didn't know it. But God was preparing me for something I never imagined. Amen. Amen. Astrologers from Iran more than likely never expected to find themselves in a little Jewish town called Bethlehem. 
This was not part of their world. This was not their country. It was not their religion or their philosophy. Who would have thought this would be their journey? We just never know, do we? I agree with Bruce Epperly, who said eventually all of us take routes that we had never expected to travel, whether these involve changes in employment, changes in health, changes in relationships or economic status. When life forces us from the familiar highway onto an uncharted path, we're challenged to experience holiness as we travel on another road. The path is seldom easy, but within the real limitations of life, we may discover, unexpectedly discover, possibilities we never dreamed, possibilities for, for our vocation, for our mission, for, for life transformation. The visit of the Magi and the day of Epiphany we use to mark their visit is an affirmation of how God leads us into encounters with Him in life that sometimes take us to the strangest routes. There in the cradle of Bethlehem, these foreign stargazers came face to face with a newborn king, the God of the ages. A baby born to Palestinian Jewish peasant parents, but a baby destined to be the Savior for all the world. We just never know where and when God is going to show up in our lives and how God is going to make his way into our hearts. But whenever it happens, wherever it happens, it will be the right place and the right time. You see, for me, my coming to South Maine has been an experience of the right place at the right time. Maybe yours has been as well. Whether it's here at South Maine or somewhere else, whether it's today or tomorrow or some far off tomorrow, I believe God is going to find every single one of you. The truth is God doesn't have to travel very far for the encounter to take place. The writer of the Psalms, whom tradition assigns to King David, spoke to that experience of feeling out of place the wrong place at the wrong time, but David certainly, we know, found himself in a far country of his own stupidity and sinfulness. But in the end, David felt that never failing presence. And so he wrote these words. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence, God? For if I ascend to heaven, you're, you are there. And, and if I make my bed in Sheol, Sheol, hell, well, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning and I settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and light around me become night, even the darkness, even the darkness is not dark to you, O God, for the night is as bright as the day. For darkness is as light to you. In this baby to whom the wise men came, we all come today to worship him and to find life, the life everlasting and abundant that we seek. We come to find a life free from the shackles of our own stupidity and sin. We come to find a life redeemed to love and serve as Jesus loved and served. There's a song I have sung before that says, Jesus was born to be the bread. Born to be the bread of life to my soul and your soul. And so today we are called to his table. I almost always, on this first Sunday of a new year, make coming to the table of grace a part of worship. We need to be here 
For whatever the year of our Lord 2016 may hold for us, we know this, we will need this bread and this cup to make it through this year. Amen. For at this table, this table, we are mysteriously and miraculously given a life that will never end. A life filled with hope and promise and purpose. And it is at this table that we find the light to overcome any darkness. And we find the grace to save us from any sickness. <coughs> sickness in the world out there. Or sickness in the world in here. Amen. You are here this morning. Aren't you? Are you here? Look around. Feel the ground before you. That person next to you, you're here. It's reality. You're here this morning. And as I have said before, it is no accident that you are here. For you are at the right place at the right time. Let's pray together. Prepare our hearts now, God, for this sacred moment of coming to your table. That the bread which we are received, common bread, common bread baked by someone at a grocery store, with common elements like flour and water and yeast. And juice, juice come right off the shelf. Juice which reminds us of the fruit of the vine. Through those very common elements, you miraculously, mysteriously make yourself known to us and give us life. So may we prayerfully receive these most precious of all gifts. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <coughs>